Hi everyone, Trina here, and I wanted to get into some more of Origins of Soul with you. And um, where we left off was we were discovering the different realms of the afterlife according to the different the theologies and philosophies that we have available to us. And um, every single one of these concepts are all talking about how we are immortal and we do not die when we die. And when we die, we will definitely um, probably be taken into realms according to our foundations and our belief systems. So through that understanding, we, um, I've started to understand that through the connection to all of these theologies and belief systems, um, this is the, the opportunity to maybe get out of some of the cycles that we've been looping in over and over again with an awareness that um, we are more than just that loop or just this earth or just this body. So I think this is a, a beautiful concept that they keep expressing is that we are more than our body and we are eternal. And when you drop your flesh, you will be going into a new reality and be it the reality that you go into will be an expression of your consciousness. So I think that is truth. And um, I do believe that there is a very strong foundation for that belief system, um, especially when you understand the laws of vibration and how we are magnetically drawn to that which we resonate at. So um, here we go. And where we were was the, the rivers of light in the boat of a million years. Okay, so here is an account from a man who crossed to the other side and was taken to meet his soul family. I am riding on a wave, a beam of light. It is similar to the bands of a radio with someone turning the dial and finding the right frequency for me. I must go with the wave bands of light the waves have direction and I am flowing with it easy. They do it all for you. My mind is in tune with the movement. I flow with the resonance. The wave beam vibrates. I am locked into this too. It is a part of my own tonal pattern, a part of my frequency. In a sense, the cosmos is changeless because its motions are determined by the unalterable laws which cause it to revolve eternally without beginning or end. Its parts manifest, disappear, and then are recreated again, anew, again and again in the un dilating pulse of time. Through the process of time, life within the cosmos is regulated and maintained. Time renews all things in the cosmos by the circling process of change. Time is like a circle where all points are so linked that you cannot say where it begins or where it ends. For all points both precede and follow one another forever. Hermes or Thoth created the mystery schools across the world many thousands of years ago in an effort to raise humankind's consciousness. He was a great advocate of the eternal nature of the soul. Here is another excerpt. This one is from an esoteric journal of his travels into the inner realms called the Emerald Tablet. Now many of you have heard the Emerald Tablets before of Thoth, and this is just a quick little part of it, so I will just read you what is here. Once I stood in the halls of Amente, and I heard the vo voice of the lords of Amente saying in tones that rang through the silence, words of power, mighty and potent, chanted they the song 
of the cycles, the words that open the path to beyond. A, I saw the great path opened and looked for an instant into the beyond. I saw the movement of the cycles, vast as the thought of the source could convey. Seek ye, O man, to learn the pathway that leads through the spaces that are formed forth in time. I, time, which exists through all spaces, floating in a smooth, rhythmic movement that is eternally in a state of fixation. Time changes not, but all things change in time, for time is the force that holds events separate, each in its proper place. I, by time, ye exist, all in time, all in all, an eternal one existence. Know ye that even though in time ye are separate, yet still are you one in all times existent. Yet by only curves could I hope to attain the key that would give me access to time space found that I only by moving upward and yet again by moving rightward I could be free from the time of this movement. Then it goes into the life review in the halls of Amente. In Egyptian cosmology it is Anubis, the opener of the ways, who leads the soul through the darkened darkness into the light. Here at the gates of heaven before the throne of Osiris, the heart of the deceased is weighed on the balanced scales of life against the feather of Ma'at. This weighing of the heart ceremony cannot be underestimated. For the power of Ma'at or the power of cosmic truth is the principle of karma itself. Karma, the mechanism by which the soul learns that which what we sow in this life is what we shall reap, whether in this life or the next. This is the most efficient way that we can experience the consequences of our actions. The Law of the Circle by Patricia Cota Robles. The law of the circle is accurate to the letter and we are all subject to this universal law. As children of God, we are responsible for how we choose to use every atomic and subatomic particle and wave of our life force. With every thought, feeling, word, or action, we are co-creating patterns that are either adding to the light of the world or adding to the shadow. Depending upon the frequency of the vibrations we send forth, our co-creations will either be a blessing or a cause or cause a problem for ourselves and all life upon this planet. This is how we learn to become co-creators with our Father Mother God. The law of the circle will eventually return to us every electron of life force that we have ever sent forth. This process allows us to experience what we have created through our own free will choices, and it gives us the opportunity to transmute our miscreations back into light. And that is a beautiful truth, transmuting our miscreations back into light. That is a beautiful way to clear your aura and clear your field and clear your subconscious mind is to invoke that to be done. Um, all of all that you have created through free will that has been miscreated, turn it back into light, transmute it out of your body, out of your consciousness, out of your your atomic structure. Transmute it back into light.
That is a powerful, beautiful truth. So then it goes into the great work of soul transformation. I'm skipping a little bit because it's just about some more history and about um, different um, measures of our soul. So when you cross over, it's just different theologies of the same principle as Ma'at and the feather. Um, you're going you're gonna to be held accountable for what you did and what you vibrate at and what you, what, where your consciousness is at at the end of this life cycle. This seems pretty consistent throughout almost every one of these ancient theosophies, which we're studying the concept of God and what are we as a child of God. So the great work of the soul's transformation. In ancient Egypt, each person was believed to have nine subtle energy bodies that comprised each human incarnation. Three of these bodies are linked to our physical, emotional self and three are linked to our emotional spiritual self and three are linked to our mental spiritual self the bodies linked to our physical emotional selves are the cot or the shot the physical body the ren the cell the self which gives us the instincts for survival and the kahabit which represents our unprocessed emotional shadow. This may be similar to the unconscious mind, where we store our deepest fears and our personality patterns, as we have seen. The shadow can drive us to drink, smoke, overeat, or engage in all sorts of negative behaviors, activities that bind us to the lower astral realms. The second triad represents our emotional spiritual aspects. It consists of the Sekhem, the keeper of our vital life force energies, the shining Ak of the illuminated of the illuminated mind, and the Ka, which is described as part of the self that guides the fortunes of the individual in each life. The Ka is not an element of personality itself, but it is said to be a spiritual twin similar to a daemon or a spirit guide and that is not to be confused with demon demons and daemons are very different demons are the lower and daemons are the higher so the spirit is said to guide a person's fate and was even depicted in egypt as a second person or a double in egyptian paintings Egyptian wisdom taught that everything exists in existence has its double, including plants, animals, and objects. So this may be like an overlighting spiritual or an astral double. Nadler tells us that the Ka is associated with a person's fate and that it also is connected to the, God, the goodness of the heart. The final triad of energy bodies or mental spiritual self consists of the sahu or spiritual body, the ku or radiant higher self, and the ba, which is our spiritual soul essence. The ba was often depicted traveling to and from heaven with a hawk's body and a human head. Nader explains the Ba seeks out the spiritual world in which the gods reside, like a falcon soaring towards the sun. Because it belongs to the eternal heaven world, one can strengthen one's Ba during life by steeping oneself in the matters of spirit. This old kingdom sage, Patahop, Patohet, Pa. I cannot say that, sorry guys, <laughs> says the wise fed their Ba with which that endures. The nature of the Ba is that it is drawn to what is eternal. For this place of origin, it's home. While large portions of the Ba remain in heaven as the angels twin, a subject discussed at length in chapter 13. The soul sends a portion of its energy into the lower realms to take on human form. From here on, earth 
In so doing, it hopes to use this time on earth to bring back wisdom that can integrate when that life is over. So, however, if our personal if our personality becomes too mirrored in the lower passions, then the human self makes no progress for the soul. It has forgotten its true reasons for being here. However, if we have lived a life of goodness, worth, value, then these subtle aspects of our personality will naturally gravitate towards the higher realms, joining with the Ba as it reaps the lessons of the most recent life. Egyptian wisdom teaches that if we have lived a virtuous life, then we will rejoin the higher self in heaven. And in these higher realms, everyone lives with an awareness of the oneness of life. So the soul is free to gauge its progress with a complex honesty. Thus, we choose our next life based upon the spiritual progress provided. This begins the alchemy of transforming the little self or ego into the divine self. This is what the masters call the great work. Each life is another chance to learn the lessons of spirit, but how well we do is up to us. The circumstances of each life are chosen by ourselves and by our guides, based upon what we, bo we most need to learn. Our choice is made in former lives and our progress in our lessons here in this earth school. Okay, guys, I think I will start another one in a little bit. Uploading has been very slow, so hopefully it goes well. Much love to you all, and I will talk to you very soon. Have a great day. Bye-bye.